key to being able to do calculations from chemical equations is the mole to mole ratio. And so what we're going to do is start out showing you how to figure the proper mole to mole ratio, then how to use it, and then we will go through a series of problems. Let's consider this balanced equation. Here we have the reaction of tetraphosphorus decoxide, which I will from now on call P4O10, reacting with water to produce phosphoric acid. Now, let me show you what the equation is telling us. The equation is telling us that one mole of P4O10 will react with six moles of water and in so doing will produce four moles of phosphoric acid under ideal circumstances, of course. But what if we didn't start out with one mole of P4O10? What if we started out with three moles of P4O10? Then the question becomes, how much water is it going to take? Well now, folks, look at that equation. The equation tells us that six moles of water reacts with one mole of P4O10. If six moles of water reacts with P4O10, therefore, you're going to need 18 moles of water. Now, how many moles of phosphoric acid could you produce, if all things were perfect, of course? And the answer is 12 moles of phosphoric acid. Let's see how to set that up on a mole-to-mole -mole ratio. 3 moles of P4O10 times a 6 to 1 mole ratio. Now the 6 to 1 mole ratio is the mole ratio of water to P4O10. This will take us then to the number of moles of water that we need to react with the 3 moles of P4O10. It is a 6 to 1 ratio. That mole-to-mole -mole ratio for finding water is the key to solving this problem. And look at this. If we're starting with that 3 moles of P4O10, how much phosphoric acid could we produce? The ratio of phosphoric acid to P4O10 is 4 to 1. 4 moles of phosphoric acid to every mole of P4O10. And that mole-to-mole -mole ratio is the ticket for our finding the answer. As we look at this balanced equation, we see that the mole-to-mole -mole ratio, which comes from the balanced equation, is that which establishes the quantitative relationship that exists in that equation. And it is unique to that balanced equation. This ratio is always expressed. When you're trying to solve problems, you're always looking for the ratio. And it is expressed as the moles of unknown are what you're looking for to the moles of known are what you are given. So it's what you're looking for over what you're given. In short, we start out with a known quantity of a material, perhaps P4O10. It could be anything. We convert that to moles of that known quantity. Sometimes we even start out with the moles of a quantity, which makes it easy because we're already part of the way along to the solution of the problem. We convert from the known quantity to moles of what we have. And from there we go to moles of what we need or what we're looking for. And if necessary then we change that to the quantity of what we need or what we're looking for. Let's try a problem and see how it works. Let's calculate the mass of copper needed to react with 10.3 grams of nitric acid, assuming, of course, that everything is perfect. To find the mass of copper, when we're given 10.3 grams of nitric acid, we have to follow the pathway that I showed you using the mole-to-mole -mole ratio. Look at the bottom of the page and you will see that I have an outline of the path of the reaction that we're going, or the path of the calculation that we're going to use. We start with our 10.3 grams of nitric acid and we convert that to moles. Well, one mole of nitric acid when we add up all of those atomic weights is about 63 grams. 
Now we've converted the nitric acid from mass to moles. Now let's go to moles of copper, and we use our mole-to-mole -mole ratio. Do you recall that the mole-to-mole -mole ratio is always what you're looking for, which in this case is the copper, over what you're given, which in this case is the nitric acid? So it's a 3 to 8 mole-to-mole -mole ratio. Now at this point, we have converted to moles of copper. So let's exit on mass of copper. And we know that a mole of copper is 63.5 grams. That is the gram atomic weight of copper. Let's check these units. Grams will cancel grams. Moles will cancel moles. And all we're left with is grams. And so we've come out with 3.89 grams. And I think we're justified in using three significant figures here. Since we have 10.3, which is has three significant digits, we have used the masses in three significant fig figures, or three significant digits. The 3 to 8 is an absolute ratio of whole counting numbers, so we don't have to use those in figuring our significant figures. So yes, our answer is 3.89 grams. Here is a system. Now I'm going to use two equations this time. And instead of having you calculate one equation and then pull that amount and calculate the other, I'm going to show you how to combine the two and work it as one problem very easily, thanks to the concept of mole-to-mole -mole ratios. We want to calculate the weight of zinc that we need to react with the phosphoric acid produced when 10 grams of P4O10 is consumed. In other words, we want the zinc. But we're starting with the P4O10. The zinc is in one equation. The P4O10 is in another equation. And that is perfectly OK. Here is the way it works. You've got to locate what connects the two equations. You want to get from P4O10 down to zinc. But you've got to have a connection between the two equations. Something produced, for example, in the first equation has got to be consumed in the second equation. And what is it? It is the phosphoric acid. So what we're going to do is start with the P4O10, go to phosphoric acid, and when we're at phosphoric acid, folks, we're at phosphoric acid. It's the same thing in both equations. Then we go to zinc. Here we go. We start with our 10 grams of P4O10, and we go to phosphoric acid. But we've got to get to moles of P4O10 first. So it's one mole over 284 grams. We are now at moles of P4O10. Now go to moles of phosphoric acid. And the mole to mole ratio is 4 to 1. We are now at moles of phosphoric acid. Don't change to quantity, folks. Moles works perfectly well. You're at moles of phosphoric acid. Now go to moles of zinc. And the ratio is 3 moles of zinc to 2 moles of phosphoric acid. Folks, the amount of phosphoric acid produced in the first equation is the amount of phosphoric acid that is consumed in the second equation. They are the same. That 4 in front of the phosphoric acid in the first equation and the 2 in front of the phosphoric acid in the second equation are numbers that are unique to the specific equations. Don't try to set up a relationship between those two. The relationship is they are identical. Okay, now we've got moles of phosphoric acid. We've converted that to moles of zinc. Now let's find the weight of zinc. And it's times 65.4 grams per mole. And when I figured this out and looked at the number of significant figures, I found the answer to be 13.8 grams. Did you do that? Did you get it? You might need to go back and look at this and pause this video and see if you can get the answer also. I hope this has helped. It's brought to you courtesy of the Chemistry Professor, providing complete courses in chemistry on DVD. So visit us at our website, chemistryprofessor.com.